In the hearts of Rwanda, a remarkable event takes place each year. Where art and humanity intertwine, it's a celebration of creativity, compassion, and connection. A powerful reminder that art has the potential to transcend borders, heal wounds, and inspire change. Welcome to the Ubumunu Art Festival. For the past nine years, the Ubumunu Art Festival has illuminated the vibrant city of Kigali, Rwanda, becoming an emblem of hope and unity. This extraordinary event has gathered artists from every corner of the globe, converging in the heart of Africa to celebrate our shared humanity and inspire a brighter tomorrow. Imagine a stage that welcomes artists as diverse as the colors of a rainbow, poets, dancers, actors, musicians, all gather here joining hands and hearts in a harmonious symphony of creativity. Each year, the Obumunu Art Festival showcases their awe-inspiring talents, their stories woven together in a tapestry that reflects the kaleidoscope of our world. Artists come together not merely as entertainers, but as change makers. They bring with them stories of resilience, stories of triumph over adversity, stories that remind us all of the strength within our shared humanity. Their performances echo the beat of a collective heartbeat, urging us to stand up, to take action, and to embrace the power we hold to make a difference. The Ubumunu Art Festival was founded by Hope Azida, a major figure in contemporary Rwandan theatre and the founder and artistic director of Masharika Performing Arts and Media Company. It all started in 2015 when Hope submitted an idea to the Africa Leadership Project as her project's proposal. I love following the voice of my inner child because it helps me dare dream and that's where the festival was born. Everything I've always started in my life, I never like listen to questions around the what's and how's and when's. I just do. I just kick off this journey. So my journey as an artist regarding this festival really started around 2015. I had been using art as a tool for social transformation in Rwanda for about, I think, 15 years. I started in Uganda, where I was born and raised as a refugee and returned here. So through using art as a tool for social transformation and engaging with the, our company, Mashirika Performing Art and Media Company, we were encouraged to do more. And I was approached to, to go to a leadership course. What this leadership course is to push you from success to significance. So doing a successful production was not enough. While we were beginning to get comfortable, we were like, oh wow, yeah, we have an audience, we have everything, we know what we are doing. That's when actually challenges started. What are you doing to leave a legacy behind? A legacy is the seed you plant and never get to see. So this is why they push you. What are you doing? And uh, at the end of the course, you're supposed to sign out with a leadership project. The leadership project I signed out with was Ubumun Art Festival, which is now an organization. So the festival is now a program under the organization. So that's how the festival was born. The project you sign out with, it's supposed to be challenging. And uh, the challenging element for me in this festival was 
doing it at the memorial, which genocide memorial had for me been an educational space for me to learn the stages of violence. And as an artist, I didn't want to see what happened in this country happen elsewhere. So I was like, why don't we use this space, the amphitheater, to invite other artists to come and you know reflect uh, on their on, on, the, on, on their works as artists or as, or as curators. What kind of works are they? Uh, curating their communities that bridge these kind of gaps because what happened in Rwanda is not unique to Rwanda. It's an evil ideology that can happen elsewhere and has happened elsewhere as we have all seen. So that's why the festival was really, it was born out of that gap and question of are we having the right conversations? Are we as artists using our works to spark these kind of conversations? What are we spending about 24 seven investing our souls in and creating that itself. So that's how the, really the festival was born on that background, against that background, yeah. In nine years, the festival has flourished into the biggest performance art festival for social good in Africa. With every passing year, it has grown in both size and impact, casting its spell over audiences far and wide. It has become a testament to the power of art to bridge gaps, shatter stereotypes, and ignite conversations that foster understanding. A few years after I graduated, um, I think two years after I graduated, uh, there was another student there from here, um, and she put out the call. Uh, and I had actually just worked on a play about Rwanda in New York. Um, and I saw the email and I thought, I would love to go there, I would love to see it. Um, and so I emailed and the, the rest is history, I guess, yeah. Um, I came and I, I really enjoyed working on it and I, I kept, kept coming. I've been working with the festival since it started in 2015. Yeah. 2015? Yes. From the very beginning? From the very beginning, yes. How did you get involved? Um, it's through Hope, because I was working with um, yeah. Hope in Mashirika. Okay. And then um, she had this idea of starting a festival. Yeah. And of course... What were you doing at Mashirika? I was doing so many things. Okay. But of course, I was into logistics, okay. management. Yeah, okay. Um, and acting. Mm. Oh, you're an actor? Yes. Interesting. <laughs> I acted in the festival as well. Okay, okay. Yeah. So and then 20... she told you yeah. she wanted to start a festival, a festival and then you were like... When she was designing the logo, mm. I remember um, at the office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She had two logos, mm -hmm. like coming up with a festival, and like, ah, oh, that's a cool idea. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And then I was like, ah, it's a brilliant idea. A brilliant idea. And I was like, I want to be part of this. Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you. How my journey started with Ubumo is, uh, it's not coincidental. I can say it's a blessing. Uh, I just come from um, studying in the States under the, uh, the initiative of President Obama which is the Mandela Washington Fellowship. So after my fellowship, I had to be attached to an organization for, as an intern. And um, Rwanda became my home. And uh, uh, through Mashirika, through my mentor, sister, Opa Zeda, that's how I ended up in Rwanda. And uh, from that relationship, she had an idea of having a festival that speaks to humanity about humanity. And uh, myself being an artist, creative uh, person, I fell for the, for, the, for the idea, the vision, you know. She saw not only just a festival, but just beyond that, something that can touch and talk to the spirit. And uh, I quickly said I'm on board and uh, started uh, uh, contributing to the ideas on the table. And from that, that's when I said I'll be in charge of the technical and stage, yeah. since I had a background and knowledge about it, very much knowledge about it. And um, to date, it's been uh, a bumpy ride, but also beautiful. Yeah. yeah, we've had our challenges as a festival, as individuals, but the most important thing that kept us going is the vision that Sister Hopper Z has set in this festival, mm. which is to speak to humanity, the stories of humanity. The Obomono Art Festival provides a safe space for artists to explore their own personal stories, to delve into the depths of their emotions, 
and to embark on a path of healing and self-discovery. It serves as a platform for artists to confront their own trauma, scars and challenges, finding solace and strength in their creative expressions. When artists channel their pain, their joy and their experiences into art forms, it empowers them to transform their personal narratives into captivating performances that resonate with audiences on a profound level. I grew up in social projects, I grew up on the streets, so I come from poverty. I know what means death at any side of the house, I know what means poverty on the table. And, um, and through art, I could see a new world, I, I could get a new perspective of life. I got new knowledge, I, got, I started to question myself why I'm here, now, why this, why, why I'm feeling this. Uh, and uh, since I was a kid, I start to bring my friends together. I build uh, circles, a uh, tent circles on the backyard of my mother, with a uh, leftover of a circles that came into the neighborhood. And then um, I would go to the circles that just arrived in, in my neighborhood, and I would learn just by watching everything they would do on stage. And I, would, I didn't have money to pay, but I became friends of them, of the clowns, to watch. And then I would come back home, I wait them to go away, and then I would take the leftovers like piece of ropes, piece of plastic, tent, and I would build my own tent, teach my cousins uh, some tricks from the circus, and I would invite the whole community to just watch. And I was eight years old. For there, it was the moment that I experienced transformation through art, without knowing that that was art. You that I was just playing, playing with something that has enchanted me, that has touched me, you know, by seeing that people that live in poverty coming together in, in for a moment, laughing, being together, looking into each other's eyes. And for me, this was something that stayed with me for long. And then at school, I went to school as well. And then um, I started to join the drama school. And also, I started to be very active at school. And then I discovered dance. And then uh, through dance, I made my way. I got to, to, to become a teacher in a social project. And then uh, I became the choreographer. And then I traveled to New York to dance. And then I got con in contact with different cultures, different people. And all this inf new information that was coming for me was uh, making me wanting more. And the only thing that what was in my mind was, I, I want to get more but I also want to give more. So I always had this dream of coming to Africa as well and, uh, and to do social work. And then in 2013, I found myself in Cape Town working a social dance project, which is where my, art, my heart lives because I come from there. And I know the power of art through social projects. Now, not art as entertainment, just to laugh, but as a transformative tool, now, as a tool for social change. I'm a dancer. That is my passion, that is my, my, my baby, that is everything, because uh, is where I, I earn what, I'm, what am I. It's where I became who, who am I. So um, dance career is all pushed me today to understand even if the processes, even if the process of, uh, of, of the world, how it's evolving. And a long time ago, now eight years, like eight years, I met uh, Ubumunu. Ubumunu was about, for me, it was about like, I was on the internet first, like reading something on, a, on the internet. And um, we get invited in Kigali for East African Tolerance. And it was uh, another festival here for contemporary night dance. And uh, that night, I met Hope. That night was like crazy night because when I met Hope, it was the first question I asked her because uh, she, she came to tell us, congratulations guys, you guys perform nice. And then my, my question was like, hey, hello, how are we doing? People talk about, uh, about you, so I want to know what you're doing. And then she told us about her festival, about Bumunu, and then, I saw the version of Ubumunu, of Ubumunu. I saw the idea, I saw the process. And then my, my version was like to, 
uh, to create something to improve, like Obomuntu gonna ask us to come to Obomuntu yeah. because it was not easy to come to Obomuntu for the first day. And uh, we tried to work on something and we sent to Hope and all the team. So they were like, okay, you guys, you can come and try for the first time, but if it's not going well, okay, you guys, it's good you perform for the first time and you can go back. My version was to perform again, to show what I'm thinking, because Rwanda is my, ma my motherland. Rwanda is like, we're always going to Rwanda when we want to have something or food or meet people or even if the girls. So for us, it's like here and here. And then we, for, the hour, for our first time when we came in Rwanda, it, it was like a dream, like a dream come true because it was our first time to traveling. Through their artistic expressions, these artists not only find healing for themselves, but also become beacons of inspiration for others. My history with Rwanda goes back to 2017. So I, I began uh, visiting Rwanda then with Mind Leaps, the NGO. Um, and I, I was at a really bad place in my, in my career. I had fallen out of love with dance. And I thought that I was gonna come here and uh, help or change lives. And um, actually they reminded me of, of why I dance. And so then, you know, I, I, last year I came and I choreographed on Mind Leaps uh, from love. It just came and it was just that connection, right? And, and I meet, I've met so many different dancers, so many different generations. And, and uh, then Hope invited me this year um, to, to make a collaboration with Ballet de Barcelona and, and Rwandan dancers. Um, all of them I, I've already known. They're, they're already my family. Um, and I really feel that. I really believe that. Uh, it goes beyond explanation the connection that I have with these dancers. And so um, in creating this piece with my family, it's amazing that in five years, they've become amazing dancers and that the dancers from here and from Ballet de Barcelona, they dance so well together and, and they, you know, they're on the same level and um, they get along so well, so naturally and um, the process was created from love, human love. Um, and so the dancers here from Valle de Barcelona, it's their first time in Rwanda. And tonight's the opening, so we were just reflecting, you know, during lunch. And it's amazing to see that they felt that love too the gifts that the Rwandan people have to, to give constantly, consistently. And, it, and it's the small things. The small things make big things. It's the maramutse, it's the amakuru, it, it's the handshake, it's the hug, it's the smile. I think we lack that in other parts of the world. And to see not only myself, I felt it, Carlos felt it, but all these dancers, whether they're from Japan, United States, Spain, they felt that. They, felt, they found this consistent, courageous love in the culture here, and it's humbled them too. The art brings so many things in my, in my life, in my old life, because I didn't go, I didn't go to school first. I, didn't, I, I don't have any, any diploma, but I know how to talk English. I know how to talk French. I know how to read. I know how to lead a biggest company like Street Dancers. It's to say, uh, art is, um, is a, a certain level of, um, um, how can I say it? A certain level of, of understanding. It's like you can be a human being, but to be a real human being, you have to put art in you to understand everything around you. It's because for me, I had so many fights when I was very kid. I had so many problems. I was like, uh, I was in the road all my life. Like, 
You were on the street. Yes, for us, art is everything. For us, art pushes us to understand the world, to art to traveling around, to meet good person, to exchange the ideas because when you exchange ideas, there you know what you have to bring in your life. And you know how to, to settle with different problems. And now today, I'm, uh, I'm in Rwanda, talking with uh, different people, with, with beautiful art, with beautiful art. Do you understand? That's why I think like art, it's not just art what people see, but it's a different level of art who put people together to talk about different problems what we have in our society. Because in our society, we will be having the problems. So we have to like preparing everything, like the basic has to be read. So in that way, the art came in. That way I saying like art is everything for me. Is everything, is, is my food, is my love, is my sweetheart. Yeah, is everything for me. Ubumunu Art Festival finds its venue at the Kigali Genocide Memorial, a place of immense historical significance. Happening annually in July, following the last week of the 100 days commemoration of the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi in Rwanda, it is held at the outdoor amphitheater of the Memorial Center and brings different artists from around the world to convey in Kigali. The choice of hosting the festival at this location is deliberate and impactful as it intertwines the festival's mission and objectives with the memory of the genocide in Rwanda. The Kigali Genocide Memorial serves as a powerful reminder of the atrocities that took place during the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi in Rwanda, honoring the lives lost and providing a space for reflection and remembrance. By hosting the Ubumunu Art Festival at this sacred site, the festival acknowledges the past and seeks to promote healing, reconciliation and unity through the medium of art. The Kigali Genocide Memorial uh, is, is one of the genocide memorials that we have in, in Rwanda. Um, uh, it has started in 1999. Its official opening was in 2004, uh, at the time where, when the country was, was commemorating the 10th anniversary of genocide against the Tutsi. Uh, so it's, um, um, this memorial uh, is, uh, I may say, that is, is a place where people learn, but also remember. Uh, so it's a more than 200 and. 50,000 bodies of victims are buried to this memorial. Um, we have wall of names of, of some of the victims buried here. Uh, on, and we have a genocide museum to um, understand more how the genocide was uh, planned, executed, and uh, consequences that the country faced. Uh, that's about the history of, of the genocide against the Tutsi, but we have another exhibition dedicated to other genocide and mass killings around the world. So it, it also touches to the, uh, let me say, the, 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 what the world really suffered, how the world suffered 
from the genocide and, and other crimes against humanity. Um, but not only the exhibitions, but also the archives to keep the memory of the genocide. And uh, there's an education uh, program to uh, educate and focusing on uh, promoting positive values. It serves as a reminder that art has the power to transform pain into resilience, hatred into empathy, and division into unity. By bringing artists from all over the world to the Kigali Genocide Memorial, the Obumunu Art Festival allows them to engage with the memorial stories and the local community directly affected by the genocide. This proximity to the memorial grounds the festival's mission in the lived experiences of the Rwandan people, inspiring artists and audiences alike to confront the past, reconcile differences, and build a future based on understanding and shared humanity. The partnership started in uh, 2015. Um, as you can see, I have this brand. <laughs> the pin is Obumono, is humanity. Uh, when you come at the memorial, you'll see uh, about Obumono. It's about uh, uh, greatness of heart, generosity, kindness. It's, uh, that, that's the, the, the values that uh, failed during the genocide. So when um, the, uh, the Obumono Art Festival approached the memorial, having this uh, um, 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 uh, infrastructure that bring people together for, for commemoration. So the idea was saying that uh, seeing the, mem the memorial here, seeing how the community uh, really uh, lost, let me say, the, its identity, lost uh, who we are and dehumanize others and then kill them, we need to restore we need to uh, uh, to take back what human human being lost. So, s coming with a melody of of humanity, it, it was very big connection to what the memorial really aim is to see this past, but also build the future, build peace. That's how the the, the, the partnership came, and it was, I may say, a good time. To, to, to really partner and use this um, uh, uh, language of artist to, uh, is, a, is a language that the world hears. By intentionally bringing together artists from different parts of the world, the Obumunu Art Festival encourages a cross-pollination of artistic styles, techniques and perspectives. Artists engage in dialogue, learn from one another and discover new ways to express their creativity. This cultural exchange cultivates a deeper understanding and appreciation for each other's art forms, while also challenging artists to step outside their comfort zones and explore new artistic territories. So many people from different countries, mm. so many I mean, different personalities, mm. um, uh, a small team handling those people, mm. people wanting to go to rehearsals, mm. others wanting to go to the hotel, mm. people wanting different activities. Mm -hmm. It was really challenging at the beginning of it. Yeah. Um, because I was, I'd never worked on a festival before. Mm -hmm. So that in, in itself, mm -hmm. um, it, it, it was a, cha a challenge. Uh, yeah. yeah. What I've seen grow is the global interest. At first we had um, yeah, few international uh, companies or artists applying to the festival. It was more regional, more local. Uh, but now, it's this beautiful cocktail of all the continents they are represented here to Ubumunu. That is the greatest growth. And the stories that are there are not just performances. They speak to humanity. You get to see the growth from 2015, the stories that were spoken, and to date that humanity, there's still people out there with empathy, people who still have the love and the passion to talk beautiful stories through arts be it dance, be it music, be it visual arts, the various forms. And um, the other question you asked about um, the journey itself, what I can say is it's never um, an easy task 
you will find people come and go, which is painful. But the most important thing is humanity stays. So the team has changed over the years. And uh, we've seen growth in those who remain behind. And uh, those who left, they are still in touch with the festival. That's a beautiful thing. They are ambassadors of the festival wherever they are. So that is one area which I can safely say growth has come. We have trained uh, a lot of people. Some of them came as volunteers. Now they are professional choreographers, creative directors in their own spheres of influence. And it's, it, it went beyond from just a festival with two cameras. Now we do live streaming. You know, the whole world can tune in to watch Ubumun as it happens live. You know, we have media houses covering this event before we had to be like knocking on doors, you know, to say, come cover. But now it's like, the world is just wants to be part of this uh, initiative. So there has been immense growth. But of course, there have been um, tough days because for this vision to grow, it's all about funding at the same time. Because uh, most of the staff within the festival itself have to travel from point A to B. There are logistical expenses, the issues that have to be covered. There, there's a lot. So we really need the uh, financial support. So that is one area that is always, you know. Yes, exactly. But the most important thing, resilience. The resilience from the director and the team has kept the festival afloat. Through these collaborations, the Upamunu Art Festival fosters an environment of mutual respect and shared learning, breaking down barriers and fostering a sense of unity among artists. This intercultural dialogue not only enriches the artistic experiences of the participating individuals, but also creates lasting connections and networks that extend beyond the festival itself. By celebrating the unique contributions of artists from different countries, cultures and backgrounds, the Obumunu Art Festival nurtures a collective spirit of creativity and collaboration inspiring a global movement for positive change. For me, what this festival's theme has really uh, curated me or crafted me to be the human being I am today is to learn to invite empathy and learn that the, the, the talents we have are tools given to us to use right because we can use them to destroy or to make. And for me, the way it has transformed as a human being is always tap in my inner, in, inner universe and have a conversation with, with my inner universe. And I'm like, is the piece I'm looking for or trying to talk about uh, outside me, does it even live in me? Because like, what, what does not live in my inner universe will not uh, happen in, my, in the outer universe. You get what I'm saying? So it has really taught me to, under, to, to tap on that inner me first and do a, a self-check-in. Am I ready for this? So if I don't feel something, then I don't do it. If my heart does not read something, then I feel like I'm, not, I'm going to be empty of that something. So it has taught me to have that other to be wired into that human being who is an artist to learn to be to invite empathy in our spaces of art and to create safe spaces for these kind of conversations and that's what i encourage other people to understand because you can just be a professional artist but you also need to have another layer on top of that to to learn to read gaps in your communities to learn to read gaps within yourself to try and how do you use your tool? Because this is the power of art. It has the power to bridge these gaps, either within ourselves, it can help us heal, or it can also bridge gaps outside ourselves or in our communities. So I'm always in that. I've, it has wired me to have that eye that reads situations and try to understand and, and then be able to respond. We respond with art and we're like, what kind of conversation needs to be done here? Is it about climate change? Is it an issue of poverty? Is it a, an issue of mental health? What, what are we tapping on? What are we doing this? We, because art is life. It's a mirror of life. And through this reflective uh, abilities of mirroring life with art helps us identify the kind of conversations we should engage in. How can I be a leader? That's the big question, because you can be a chief, but not a leader. Or you can be a leader, but not a chief. And then you have to choose. Or you are a leader, or you are a chief. And me, I choose to be a leader. 
And to be a leader, you have to bring a vision. And to bring a vision, you have to ask your, your people, you have to ask your friend, what can we do to have a biggest vision for our company? And then we find something that what we are working on. Yes. And, uh, and I hope, hope will be inside. You will be inside. This old people around Obomunu will be inside. Because we, when I see you, I see myself. When I see him, I see what I see. I see what I'm dreaming. So, so to say, when I love myself, I love you. My vision is to bring something what I love. And what I love is to say you will love him. First, I ask you, what could we do for us to be in that level? So you bring your mind. I bring my mindset. And we see how to evolve in step by step. caller to have ever called the show before it ever had a name. <laughs> There's no money in this. Yeah. Uh, and why else would you sort of dedicate your life, sometimes your health, you know, your time uh, to something that doesn't, you know, doesn't reap some kind of benefit. And I've, not just myself, but I've seen countless number of people transformed uh, by uh, you know, by acting, by even sometimes by just watching theatre. But the people, of course, that go through the deepest transformation, I think, are the artists themselves. Because it's not so easy to be transformed just by watching plays. But when you, when you live, when you breathe it, when you return every day to the rehearsal room, when your, your primary uh, intention in life is to look at the world and see what's not there, or see what is disturbing and then turn it into something beautiful that makes people think. I mean, if that is your mandate as a human being, I mean, I can't think of a, a higher calling than that really. So of course, it's right at the heart of transforming pain uh, into something beautiful. The first thing I tell them is, as an artist, you need to be close to your heart. You need to believe in what you're doing, even if you don't see it. You need to believe that uh, what you're doing is making you a better person, is bringing you back good feelings, is have some has has some impact on the on the on the on the on the society. And when I'm going to create a work, the first thing I, I question myself is what does the world need at moment? And then I look to people, I talk to people, I, I start to understand what do you need, and through your needs. I, it resonates to me and I start into a uh, personal process trying to understand. And then I bring people that is going through some challenge or that needs that. And then through that work, I connect others, which is the audience. And they somehow, they feel connected to the work because it's something that has, they have been through, so be, like not consciously. No, it's, it's something that has been embedded in the bodies, in the, the traumas embedded in the bodies. And when they see, they just release. So I just had a performance and intimacy of the skin, and I had half of the theater crying. And people came to me and said, I don't know what, what, what do you have in your work? And then I said, uh, well, thank you. I think uh, you felt what you need to feel because there is something in you that's, that is hurt, hurting, that sometimes you don't know. So it's the art, the, the, part, the art of transformation. As like we, we play with some, with a very very important tool, that is movement, that is the voice, the words, and if it's well placed, well played, well choreographed, it has a huge impact on the subconscious mind. We've tried to become innovative with themes, and uh, for instance, a, um, a form like break dance. It's about tricks. It's about how I break my neck it's about but when you ask the artist behind this what is your story then that's when they ask themselves so i'm breaking my neck what's the story accompanied to breaking my neck 
you get. So that has helped us like asking, what is the story here? This is the theme we are talking about. What is your story? Because at the end of the day, your story is my story and my story is your story. So if you have your, if you're, if you've been, um, if you are into break dance and all these techniques, that, uh, for me, they, I, I get break dance because people are driven more by about the tricks uh, how how the tricks you have and how you can spin on your leg or spin on your head. I was really shocked to see a group from Uganda, a uh, spotlight crew, come on board with a story about prison, imprisonment and break dance and talking about uh, how people are tortured in prisons in their country by through break dance. I think from that was the most innovative piece, like, okay, now finally, so the prison guard is breaking your neck. And how, what is your response to your, your neck being broken? So they respond from they respond back and forth from this kind of action. So it has not been easy, but through this kind of conversations, they're trying to make the set the pace. Even in our call for applications, we try to set a background behind the why and how and what and all that. It has really been very helpful. The impact of the Obomono Art Festival will continue to reverberate far beyond these stages. It has planted seeds of compassion, empathy, and understanding within us all. It has ignited a flame within our hearts that we feel our collective pursuit of a better world, one where our shared humanity prevails over differences, where creativity overcomes adversity, and where art becomes a catalyst for change. As we carry the spirit of the Obumunu Art Festival within us, let us embrace the transformative power of art and weave it into the fabric of our daily lives. Let us continue to listen, to learn and to empathize with one another. For it is through these small acts that we build bridges, mend broken bonds and create a more harmonious and inclusive world. Man, I would love to see the festival expand. Um, I would love to see it. Uh, go past just the the three four days that it that it happens in July. Um, uh, I, I personally I, I've already um, sometimes met people here who I've worked with again in, in other instances, and I love seeing that happen um, for me and for other people in the festival. And I would love for the festival to like start. Um, facilitating some of that maybe that would be really exciting um, if it if it was uh, if it led to other opportunities throughout the year um, because I think I really do think it, it brings people together in a really beautiful way I see woman is going to be really a fountain of humanity it's becoming that fountain that is is letting streams of rivers you know run out to different parts of the world I think we'll be fully embracing our tagline that started the festival which was one world one for all and I think that's what is really becoming when when you have Brazil then you have can, you, you have all these countries coming on board, you're like, where is this child going? It, it's going to be very good. It's going to be a global pr platform more than ever before. Not in the just uh, being centered here, but it will be spread out. There will be like different versions of, of the festival around the world. That's why I see this heading because it's, it's like it's catching a fire. Yeah, it, it's igniting that flame of hope around the world of, you know, telling people there's still humanity where there is a will to look for it. My name is Ruanti Dichikera and this is the Ubumunu Arts Festival. Yes, this is Matrix Machines Bianco aka Hangi. This is Ubumunu Art Festival and we are here for Alienated. I'm Megan, I'm from the United States. My name is Anderson Cavallo and this is Ubumunu Arts Festival. Hello, this is Carlos Renedo from Valleda, Barcelona, and this is Ubumunu Arts Festival. My name is Chase Johnsey, and this is Ubumunu Arts Festival. Hello, everybody, how you doing? My name is Brian Geza, AKA Kakula Singangangangai. I'm the stage and tech director for Ubumunu Arts Festival. Believe. My name is Innocent Munyashori, and this is Ubumunu Arts Festival. My name is Hope Azeda and uh, I am the curator for Ubumono Arts Festival. I am because you are, you are because I am.